Well, good morning, church. We are so glad that you are able to tune in and be with us on this Easter morning, Easter 2020. Now, there is an old traditional Easter greeting that has been around the church for a lot of years when someone would say, he is risen, and then the church would respond with, he is risen indeed. It actually goes all the way back to Luke chapter 24, where the angels meet the women at the tomb on that early morning. And if you tuned in for our sunrise service, it was early this morning. And when they saw him, the, women, the, the angels rather said to the woman, the women, he is risen and then in verse 34 of Luke 24, uh, the two men who had met Jesus on the road to Emmaus come back and they tell the other disciples and they exclaim, the Lord is risen indeed. So it would be a tradition on Easter morning to say he is risen and they would respond with he is risen indeed. So right now where you are, whether you're by yourself or you're with your family or you're with a very small group socially distancing, of course, like we are here, I'm going to say he is risen and I want you all at home where you're at right now to respond with he is risen indeed. Ready? He is risen. Amen. I tell you what, I am so glad that you are able to tune in. If there's been any hiccups or, or issues with anything so far, we do apologize. It's a, a new system. We're still learning all the bells and whistles on it. But I, what I do want you to do, something that you can do right now on your phone or on your tablet or however you're streaming this, is to go ahead, if you haven't already, hit that share button. Please share this so that your friends can see it and then their friends can see it and, and, and get this message out there as best we can. Also, I love, I absolutely love the reason that I and we are still doing live stream services and we're not coming in here on Friday afternoon and recording something and then just playing it today is because I love the live interaction. Now I have to go back and see it, but when the thumbs up, up, come up and when those hearts come up so so hit those thumbs up hit those hearts comment uh, in the comment section let, let us know anytime that a, a point hits you or, or or it makes you think of something I, if, if you're watching from wherever you're watching if you're not one of our regular family members here in Lodi I sure would love for you to say hey I'm watching from Cambridge, Ohio, or wherever you happen to be, let us know. I know we even have friends uh, in South Korea and some of our own brothers and sisters in the Philippines who are watching right now. So let us know that you are online and here with us. You know, this is going to be a very, and this has already been, a very different Easter. I mean, as far as I know, this is the first time in over 2,000 years that the Church of Christ in large groups are not getting together around the world to celebrate Easter, to have an Easter worship service and, and a day when many visitors come and, and family get together and, and they all go to church. That's not happening today. Today around the world and, and right now in, in our town, there are some people that might be in very small groups. There are people worshiping at home, but the large group celebration, they're just not taking place right now. But I want you to know that regardless of how the news might advertise it, regardless of what memes or things on Facebook or other social media platforms may say, Easter is not canceled. You see, Easter is not about a location and it's not even just about a gathering. Easter is about a celebration and the celebration is that he is risen and he is risen indeed. I read that there are 2.3 billion believers in our world today. That means that literally one out of every three people in the world are a believer in Jesus Christ. That means that 2.3 billion people, even though they can't get together in large groups, today are celebrating that Jesus is risen. The truth and the power of the resurrection, <clears throat> nothing can stop it. 
There, there, there's, there's no disease. There's, there's, no, there's no lockdown. There's no quarantine. There's nothing that can stop the celebration of Easter in the heart, whether it's done online and in your home. Easter is not canceled. And although we are apart, we're certainly not alone. Amen. Although we're apart, we're not alone. We might have to, for a season, we are isolated, but we're not separated. You see, the the church doors, they're closed. They're locked right now. But the invitation, the joy, the hope of the resurrection, what Jesus offers to us is always open, and it will never close. And do you know why? Do you know why 2.3 billion people, do you know why you right now are with us celebrating the resurrection of Jesus? It's because he is risen and he has risen and there is historical proof and we believe what God wrote in his word to be true, that Jesus rose. That's good news. You know, God, when he chose his people, he needed to begin with a nation. And he, he chose Abraham, and Abraham is a great man of faith and someone we look to in, in the pages of Scripture. But Abraham died at about 1638 B.C. He was buried in a cave, and he's never been seen again. Moses was the one that God chose to literally hand God's handwritten law to, to give to his people. And Moses died in 1473 B.C. He was buried on Mount Nebo, the Bible tells us, and he's never been seen again. Buddha, the founder of Buddhism, he died in 400 B.C. He was cremated and he was placed in monuments throughout India. He's never been seen since. Uh, Muhammad died in 632 A.D., the founder of Islam. He was buried in what used to be his house, which is now a mosque in Medina, and he has never been seen again. L. Ron Hubbard, the guy that came up with the Scientology religion, he died in 1986. He was cremated and his ashes were scattered out to sea and he's never been seen again. Jesus was crucified on a cross over 2,000 years ago. He died on that cross. His side was pierced with a spear. He was placed in a tomb. A rock was rolled in front of the door of the tomb. It was sealed. It was guarded by a Roman centurion. But on Easter morning, on this Sunday, some 2,000 years ago, the stone was rolled away by an angel. The tomb was found empty. Jesus had risen. He appeared to Mary. He appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. He appeared to his followers in an upper room. He even appeared to Peter while Peter was fishing and made him breakfast on the beach. He, the Bible says, when he came back, he appeared to more than 500 people after they had killed him because he conquered death. Patrick Mead said that the world thought that death had come for Jesus, but what really happened was Jesus had come for death. And he beat it, and he conquered it. He rose. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He's conquered sin. He's conquered death. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's our Savior, and he is risen. And in that, we find hope and a promise that we, too, will rise. That's why Easter cannot be stopped. Amen. Amen. See, Easter is this celebration, and I promise you that your leadership, several of your pastors, your elders are here, three of them are here, and a couple of our praise team members, and, you know, we've talked and we've prayed. I want you to know that Easter is still going to happen, because it is happening now, but our Easter celebration, we had it all planned. I mean, we had the kids' programs planned, we had the videos and the stuff we wanted to share planned, we had the crosses planned and some things we wanted to do, the sunrise service, the Easter even though it took place. But when we do come back together, because this season will end. I mean, this, this has to end at some point. Either that or Jesus will come back, and I'm okay with either. But when it does end, and when we do come back together, we're going to celebrate Easter. But in the meantime, we get to celebrate it right here, right now, separated but together. I want to look at a passage. 
Uh, I posted online in several different places an outline. You, you could have printed that up or you can just take some notes or if you're savvy enough to split your screen, you might even have it up on one side of the screen while you have this up on the other. But I want to look at a passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I want you to be thinking about this idea that because of the resurrection, we will rise. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want you to look at verses 8 and 11. It's right here on the screen as well. But, but if you have your Bible, you might want to turn. Uh, it says, we are hard pressed. This is Paul writing, talking to the church. He says, we are hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus might also be revealed in our body. For we are alive and are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. Man, that is a text. This is something that ought to speak to us today in a very real, in a very fresh, new, powerful way. This is a text that tells us that you can be pressed, but not be crushed. That you can be perplexed, but not be left in despair. That you can be persecuted, but you're not abandoned. That you can be struck down, but you will not be destroyed. And then when you read the text, the whole part, uh, point of, of chapter 4 in 2 Corinthians is it's all because of the resurrection. So quickly this morning, just for a few minutes, I, I left you three blanks on your outline because it, it wouldn't be church if you didn't have an outline and some blanks to fill in. Amen. So I left you some blanks on your outline. Three things just straight from this text, just three things from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that Paul and the early first followers of Jesus, that because of the resurrection, they knew they would rise, not just when we rise at the end, because that's going to happen, but I mean, even through the things we face right now, things that press us can't crush us, things that perplex us won't despair us, things that persecute us won't abandon us, and things that may get us down for a little bit will never destroy us, and these three reasons are why that will happen. So fill these in on your outline. Number one is this. I need to believe in the promise of God. Believe in the promise of God. Here's how Paul says it in our text. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Paul says that he is claiming that the promises of God are true, that the promises of God are good, and that the promises of God are dependable. And he's willing to speak that. He's willing to claim that. He's willing to say that it's that same sense, that same spirit of faith, which allows him to face all of those things he's faced that some people, it would crush him. But to the believer of Jesus, because of the resurrection, it makes him confident. Some people it might destroy. It makes the Christ follower dynamic. Because God has spoken, we believe. Now, Paul writes here that it is written. Well, usually when you see in the New Testament that it says it is written, well, that means it's probably written someplace in the Old Testament. And the text that Paul is referring to here comes from the song book and the prayer book that Jesus and the the disciples, what they would have been using, the book of Psalms. So Psalm chapter 116, verses 8 and following, this is where he's quoting this from. And here this psalm writer is talking about how death is closing in on him. Enemies are closing in on him that, that, that he may feel like he's about to be crushed, but he's not because of the promise of God. So here's what it says in Psalm 116. This is what Paul was thinking about when he wrote, I believe. 
Therefore, I have spoken. And it's that same spirit of faith. So here's what it says. It's right here on the screen. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke. Man, I hope that you believe in the power and the promise of God, the promise of the resurrection, the fact that God tells us in his word that he always wants what is best for us, that all things can work for our good. Not that all things are good, because the stuff we're dealing with right now, it's not good. But God's promise is still true. And one of the ways that we will rise this Easter through this, this season that we're facing is by believing in the promise of God. Let me give you a second one, though. Paul says next, he trusted in the power of God. Trust in the power of God. Listen to our text again. Now I'm looking at verses 14 and 15 right here on the screen. Verse 14, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. Oh, man, before I go to verse 15, we got to read verse 14 again because you didn't hear that. Listen to what it says. We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus. And present us with you to himself. Verse 15, all this is for your benefit. Why? So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Oh, isn't that good? I mean, God says that his grace is reaching more and more. I love, I hate that we're not together as a family. I, I cannot wait for this season to pass. Just like the disciples couldn't wait for Saturday to get over, to make it to Easter Sunday. But sometimes God wants us to wait, to trust in his promises and to believe in his power. But here, the grace is reaching. What's going on now is because of venues like this, because of you hitting simply hitting a share button, God's word is getting out to more people than ever before. We started live streaming services like this as a church family. We started doing this over a year ago, just using an iPad and, and setting it up and just trying to record. And, and we didn't know it then, but God was teaching us and preparing us for this season that we're now in. And now I go back and I look, our sunrise service this morning, when I last checked it, there were over six hundred views that saw that. Isn't that awesome? I mean, his grace is reaching more and more people, even when the world and, and the devil and, and diseases say, you're shut down. God says, nothing shuts me down. And he's reaching more people than ever before. How awesome is that? And then you can get online. There are so many. You can go listen to anybody. I'm so glad. And I hope that, that you are watching this if you're a member of this church family. And for those of you who are members of other churches, if they are putting things online, I hope you're watching and supporting them. I mean, there are so many places you can go now and hear much better messages than you can hear from me. Um, I don't think you'll hear a better praise team than what we have here, but that's, that's biased on, on my end. But his grace is reaching more and more, and it's causing thanksgiving. Why is it causing thanksgiving? Because the one who raised Jesus will raise you. We will rise through this. Amen. That's the promise of the resurrection. And you know what happens? I think a lot of you, I mean, not even, because some of you have other situations going on in life. I, I don't know if it's financial. I don't know if it's relational. I don't know if it's spiritual or emotional. But there are things that some of you have been dealing with. And now everything else that everyone else is dealing with has just been compacted onto that. And I know it has to be hard for you. And some of you who are believers will say things like, well, yeah, yeah, I, I believe in Easter. I believe in the resurrection. I believe God took Jesus after he died and made him not dead Jesus. I believe that can happen, but my finance issue, I don't know if God can take care of that. Um, I don't know. 
I believed God could raise Jesus from the dead, but, but fix my marriage? I don't know. I don't know if he could do that. I, I mean, God, the God that brought Jesus back to life is the God whose grace is being reached and sent out to more and more people. That should give us thanksgiving, and our thanksgiving should overflow, not because of, but even in spite of all the stuff that's going on in your life, in my life, and in all of our lives right now. So look at the promise of Ephesians chapter 1. This is verses 18, 19, and 20. You know this text, but you need to hear it again. And you especially need to hear this text on Easter morning. It's right here on, on, on the screen as you're watching. Paul says, here's my prayer for you, church. This is Paul's prayer. Paul, did, Paul may or may not have known when he penned this 15, 1,800 years ago, maybe even closer to 2,000 years ago, that he was talking to us today. But the Holy Spirit knew. And here's our prayer. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and get this, and his incomparably great power. Incomparably, that means nothing compares. His incomparably great power for us who believe. Now that power is the same. It's not like, it's not similar. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he, what does it say? Raised Christ from the dead. He seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm. Man, I need to believe in the promise of God and trust in the power of God. The same power that raised Jesus will raise you too, and that's good news. Amen. One more. Number three. Believe in the promise of God. Trust in the power of God. The third thing Paul says in this text that he does is he focuses on the presence of God. He focuses on on the presence of God. There are a lot of things that are unknown. And unknown causes fear and uncertainty. Unknown causes us to worry and have anxiety and to fret because we don't know. Will May be different than April has been? Will, will things go back to normal? Will there be a new normal? I, we, we don't know. But there are some things, like the promises and the power of God, there are some things that we do know. And it's, it doesn't do us any good to focus on the things we don't know. We pray about those things. I hope you're turning those things over to God as best you know how. But we can focus on the presence of God. Jesus raised, and he went to heaven to be with his father, and he says he's coming back someday to take us all home. But in the meantime, he said, I haven't left you. I've given you my spirit, and his promise is, I'll be with you always. So Paul may be remembering those very words, I'll be with you always. He pins the next part of our text today from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Listen to what he says here. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. And here's why. These light, they may not seem light, but these light and momentary troubles, well, they're achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Therefore, and here's the key, here's where the power comes from, here's where you claim the promise, and here's where you put your focus. Therefore, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Because what's seen, this is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. Focus on what is eternal. Focus on what is unseen. You've probably seen going around the internet where people say, people claim, I don't believe in God because I don't see him. But we believe in a virus that we don't see and we stay home and we're afraid, right? Focus on God. 
Focus on his promise. Focus on his power. Focus on Jesus, and you will rise. You may feel like you're being crushed, but you're not. You may feel like you're being destroyed, but you're not, because you can believe in God's promise. You can trust in his power, and you can fix your eyes on Jesus. So look at this last text right here on the screen. It's on your outline. Hebrews 12, the writer tells us to do this. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who is the author of our faith. He's the one who brings it to its goal. And in view of the joy set before him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and he has taken his seat at the right hand of God's throne. Keep your eyes fixed on the risen Savior, Jesus. Trust in his resurrection power and believe in his promise that you will rise. He is risen, he is risen indeed, and we will rise. Let me pray for you. Father God, I ask a blessing right now on everyone who is hearing this prayer, whether it's live or after this has been recorded, I pray, Father, that we would find hope in the promise of Easter today, that we find joy because nothing can cancel Easter. Nothing can separate us from your love for us. Lord, I ask that you would help us to believe in the promises of your world of your word, regardless of what this world may be throwing at us. I pray, Lord, that we would trust in your power. If you could take care of the greatest problem on earth, sin and death, we know that you can handle anything in our life. And these things that we're going through, they're light and they're temporary in comparison to the glory that you have for us, both on this side of eternity and on the other side of eternity. So during all this time, Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus. He is our Savior. He is risen. And because of him, we will rise. We believe this. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen.